what's been on my mind. Sick and tired. Good morning, friends. It's January 4th today, and I am baking my third sourdough loaf. So I am using a recipe from this book called Artisan Sourdough by um, Emily Rafa. And so far, it is very different than the other ones I've tried. And the bread looks a lot more fluffy and it has a lot more air in it. So I'm expecting a lot more like a holy bread. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But the sourdough so far that I've made has been so delicious. We're loving baking our own bread. And we've just stopped buying bread, bread from the store. So that's been pretty cool. Anywho, I wanted to bring you along for this loaf this morning to show you how it turns out. It's in the oven right now. Um, it will be in the oven for about 30 more minutes and then I will pull it out and show you guys what it looks like. It's snowy out there, it's cold out there, it's 28 degrees and everything is covered with snow which is so much better than mud. So let me show you guys what it looks like outside. I love how pretty it looks outside when everything's just covered with snow. It's so, uh, so much nicer than mud or just brown. So it's my favorite way for the winter to look out here. Um, but I don't love being outside when it's that cold. I just feel like there's no amount of layers that can bundle up to make me feel cozy in less than 30 degrees. We did take Malachi outside a couple days ago just to see what he would think of all the fluffy snow. So funny story, we got him all bundled up. We put him in a snowsuit over his uh, sweater and then I put it in, we put him in a jacket over the snowsuit and then a hat and socks and shoes. So we get him out and he's all cozy and bundled up. Um, it's probably like 25 degrees and I bring him over to the snow to kind of see what he thinks, you know, put him down in it. And he's like really hesitant to move. He's like really unsure, has this very skeptical look on his face. And he just kind of would like fall down, like collapse into my arms instead of actually trying to take steps. So I thought that was kind of funny and odd because normally he just wants to walk and move. Anywho, um, we took some pictures and Chris even commented on how silly he was acting not wanting to walk in the snow. And shortly after taking the pictures, I realized that he was not wearing a shoe. So on one of his, one of his little feet, there was just a sock. So his foot was just like standing in the snow without a shoe on. And it was probably really cold and he didn't know why it was all wet and he was so confused. So that kind of explained why he was acting so funny in the snow. I guess the shoe had fallen off like sometime in the house. We found it upstairs, but I just, I felt bad that I was putting my little guy in the snow with no shoe on. Malachi, what do you think of all this snow? What's Dada doing? It's so snowy out here. Wow. What do you think? There. Yeah. Oh, oh, she got you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's very wobbly. Oh, he looks completely stuffed. <laughs> like stuck? Like he can't walk? Like he can't do anything, yeah. <laughs> he looks like that? Randy in the Christmas story. Meh, meh. <laughs> he like falls into me. Can you take a step? Can you go get Dada? Can you go get Dada? No. Good job. One. So we've been getting a lot of feedback on announcing our plans to move and kind of where we're thinking of moving and people are very divided on their opinion of us potentially moving to California. So I thought I would present it to you guys. And it kind of has me wondering a lot, like, are we crazy for wanting to do this? Or are we just kind of marching to the beat of our own drum and have our own preferences and needs and wants that don't necessarily match those of other people? Um, and I think people act like we're crazy as if we don't have any experience with California, but I lived there for 19 years. So I've only lived here for five years. Wait, sorry, that doesn't add up. I'm 27, so 
I've lived here for seven years and I lived in California for 20 years. There we go. Math. <laughs> um, and I've traveled all over the state with my family, very familiar with the state, very familiar with wildfires and drought, um, and very familiar with the political climate. It's really not that different from where we are in New York. And so we are going to be doing some traveling, getting a sense of what we like in certain parts of the state and seeing if, if it is a good fit for us. Um, we're not making any decisions without doing our own research and making sure we spend some time in the areas we're considering. You know, life is really short and if you spend your life making decisions based upon what other people's opinions are and um, based upon what feels safe or comfortable, you're probably going to miss out on a lot of things. And for me, I really just, I miss, I miss it. I miss California. I miss uh, my family. I miss the weather. I just have a really hard time wanting to get out in the snow and in the cold. And yes, I could do it. I could bundle up and I could go on runs and jogs and walks and all the things. We could get outside more and, and try to enjoy it, but it feels like so unpleasant to me going out trudging through the snow it just feels so unpleasant i feel cold and wet and sniffly and i just don't like it <laughs> so yeah you might think we're crazy and that's okay um, we're gonna do what's best for us and our family and we're just gonna keep making sure that we know what we're getting into and really do make sure we make a well thought out and researched decision but i did want to present to you guys you know, one of the things we are thinking about doing is traveling um, in the Airstream once it's done, which will probably be at least a year out. Um, once it's done, traveling and seeing what do we think about other parts of the country. Um, we, we have not signed a mortgage in California. We do not own a piece of land, so we are not tied down to any specific place. Um, so we are considering like, do we want to keep our options more open and look other places? So I want to kind of present my criteria of what we would love to find in a place and see if you have any suggestions for where we should. So here's what we're looking for. First and foremost, we want a lot of sunshine. We want a place that feels like it's sunny all year long, um, which also means it's going to be drier. It's a drier climate. Um, so we do want a drier climate. One of the things we really don't like about this climate is it's very muddy. Um, very often. So we would like a place that's sunny, drier. We would like a place that has different scenery like mountains, living near some sort of body of water, whether there's ocean or lakes or rivers. We want to find a place that's not too far from either of our families, which is kind of uh, difficult to capture because my, my family's all in California. They're not going anywhere. So it's either on the west or um, Chris's family is more flexible with potentially they may be more likely to move south if we move south. So like the Carolinas could be a possibility for them, even part-time or full-time, not sure. Those are kind of the main criteria. We want to be able to have land at least a couple acres so we can have uh, big gardens, orchards, um, orchards, fruit trees, an orchard, uh, fruit trees, perennials, and some animals. Would love to have horses um, in the future and chickens. Other animals we're not really set on, but chickens and horses I think are both part of our long-term goals. Space to raise kids. We'd love to find a place that has a couple acres of land, but then we have a lot of like um, wildlife and open space near us. And oh, this is a big one, right? We want it to be warm all year long. Not necessarily hot, but we would like to stay in a place where the winter is most of the time above freezing. So I think that's those are our goals. So I'd love to hear like your ideas, like what what kinds of spots do you think fit the bill for that? And I should add also, we don't want it to be really, really hot. I don't handle the super heat very well. I get a lot of headaches. So places that are consistently above 100 degrees is probably not gonna be a good option for us. Yeah, not like the desert of Arizona. That's not gonna be a good fit for us. And we want a place that's like suitable to growing food. So not like the real hardcore desert because I think the ability to grow food there is just a lot more difficult and takes a lot more planning and soil preparation and it's just not as feasible for the type of lifestyle that we have. So those are kind of the things we're looking for and honestly the only place I found that meets all those things, I think for me obviously California meets those things and then 
um, parts of, I think Arizona meet those and maybe Utah and some, some of those places. But I don't really see some of those parts of like the, the West, like Arizona, Utah, having great soil for growing food. So we'll love to hear if you disagree. But yes, mild winters are really important to us. So, um, you know, people have suggested Idaho or Colorado or places like that. And I looked at the weather and it's really not that different from where we are here. The winters are still cold, um, lots of below freezing days. And you're having at least two to three months of like uh, snowing and thawing, snowing and thawing, mud and snow and cold and wet. And that's just a long time. That's a long portion of the year to be dealing with that. So, suggestions. Where do you think is the right spot for us to take a look and see if it would be a good fit? Okay, folks, here it is in all of its glory. This looks so good. I want to just like cut into it and eat it right now, but you're supposed to let it rest for an hour which is super, super duper hard because that is the prettiest bread I've ever made and it, oh, it just looks so good. So we're gonna wait until like 12.15 because I have to head out for a work thing at 12.30. So we're gonna wait 45 minutes, let this cool and rest and then I'm gonna cut into it and I don't know, make something with it because I need to make lunch and I think something with sourdough would be the perfect lunch. Can't wait to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So I cheated, I couldn't wait, and I cut into this bread, but it is so beautiful. Mm, look at all those holes. It smells so good. So I am going to show you guys, cutting another slice, and then I'm going to put something on it. I'm not sure what. There's nothing like so homemade sourdough bread. Want a plate? Sure. You put butter on it? Huh? You put butter on it? Uh-huh. Thank you. It's like crusty on the outside and soft in the middle. Mm. It's so good. Very, very. So good. The best one I've made so far. If you haven't made sourdough before but you want to try just go for it it's really not that hard i haven't even messed up a loaf so it's been delicious and so worth it so far for me and me and you and me you're a fan of sourdough or any bread that you've been making any you're, baked good you're a fan of the bread making spree in general yeah yeah once you go sourdough you never go back mm. sorry teddy you can't have any you can't have them. And this is what I use to bake it in, just a Dutch oven, which has been working really well. This is the recipe I used for the first batch, the everyday sourdough from, from this book right here. I'll put it in the description of the video.